notation by which you can convey that what is the meaning. If I want to mark a direction here, let us say along this direction, I shall be able to give it a name here. Similarly, if I want to mark a direction here around the body diagonal, we shall be able to give it a name here. So that is what we will be able to do once I understand the concept of Miller indices for directions. Similarly, <coughs> the front face of this cube is one plane. The top face of the cube is another plane. The side face is another plane. The bottom plane is another plane. But again, writing the side face, these are not the sufficient ways. So we will need a notation by which we can say that just by naming them in a convention, we shall be able to do that. And <coughs> what is the importance of it? The importance of this happens to be that if I look at this direction here, which you observe where the cursor is right now, <coughs> we find that whether it is this direction or I move to a second parallel direction here, which you see now, or the third parallel direction here, which you see now here on the screen where the cursor is, we find that these directions can be called as crystallographically equivalent directions. crystallographically equivalent directions. What is the meaning of that? That whether you move along this direction or this direction or this direction, <coughs> you find atom, the second atom, if you have one lattice point or you have one atom motif here. So if you move from one lattice point to the next lattice point along this direction, uh, distance between these is same, whether you are moving into this direction or from here or here. So that is why you find, you call them as crystallographically equivalent direction. Similarly, whether you move along this, <coughs> this body diagonal or the second body diagonal or the crossing the other uh, diverse body diagonal, we find that they are crystallographically equivalent here. So this is what we want to give a name to, that we want to give a nomenclature by which we can devise a method to name them and that is what we will do today for directions first and then for the, the planes there. Okay, so moving ahead, we find that if you want to provide Miller indices for, a, for any direction in a unit cell, the first thing that you need to do is to have a coordinate system. Can you see what the unit cell now on your screen? Which one is this? Harjinder Singh. Harjinder Singh. Yes. Can you see a unit cell on your screen now? Harjinder Singh. Harleen <coughs> Gaur. Yes, sir. Can you see a unit cell on your screen? Yes, sir. Okay, which one it looks like? Which which crystal structure it looks like? FCC. It looks like an FCC system, or we call it as a cubic close, uh, closed pack system. Okay. The orange ones are for the <coughs> corner atoms, and the blue ones are for the face atoms here. So I want to derive a method by which the directions can be named. So how do we do that? For that purpose. The first thing is, let us say I want to name this direction, the one with the black arrow. So whenever you want to make any direction, just mark the direction. Before that, I will go for the coordinate system also. We say we find, we use normally here the right hand rule for, right hand thumb rule for giving you the coordinate system and accordingly, if you go by the right hand thumb rule, if this is the Z direction, positive Z direction, according to the right hand thumb rule, which one will be this? Which one will be this direction? Yes. Anyone can tell me? Right hand thumb rule, Suna hai kafi bari apne? If your thumb is pointing towards the Z axis, positive Z axis, and your fingers are curling towards your positive Y axis, 
then this is the positive x axis. So you have the positive x, the positive y, and the positive z. And then this will be the negative y, this will be your negative z, and this will be your negative x. Is it clear? The, the, the coordinate system is clear to you? Ritika Kaushik. Yes, sir. The coordinate system is clear to you. Which coordinate system we will be using? Yes, sir. Have you not studied the right hand thumb rule somewhere in your basic physics? Yes, sir. We have studied. Okay, but uh, okay, many we may have you have forgotten that. But let us say now this shall be clear that the, this is the positive z direction. That is the thumb direction. The fingers are curling towards positive y, and then this direction happens to be positive x. So the procedure here is keep your microphone on. Procedure here is that. <clears throat> Keep your microphone on. Yes. That if I want to mark the direction, if I want to name the direction shown with a black arrow here, so the first step that you need to do is that you have to choose the origin on the direction. The origin has to be origin in your coordinate system has to be chosen on the direction. Normally, if you say that the direction is named as let us say A B. So the starting, if it is written as A, B, we will choose the origin at A. So if this is the origin now, we have chosen the origin on the direction. The next step then, after choosing the origin, we have chosen the coordinate system, which is parallel to the unit cell edges, which we already did. I told you already, the coordinate system is having, <coughs> is, having is, is parallel to the unit cell edges. We did it in a cubic system just now. Then the next thing that we do is find the coordinates of the other point. Other point is the ending one, this one, the arrow, where the arrow is there pointing to. The coordinates of the other point are to be found here in terms of A, B, C. Can you name what is A, B, C here? It's a plane. No, no, A, B, C. In a, in a unit yeah. cell, cubic unit cell if it is, so that you yes. see here. Not no no. This is small a b c a b and c. These are the lattice parameters. That is a b and c. Although in a cubic one, they are all equal to a, equal to b, equal to c. Is it right? Okay. Yes. The coordinates have to be found in terms of the edge length or the lattice constant or you call it as the cube cube edge length in this particular case or the correct name happens to be the <coughs> lattice parameters. So what is the coordinate of this point the, where the arrow is ending here? We have to find the coordinates of this point here with respect to the origin which is on the tail of this, which is here. The origin is here, the other point is here. So the coordinates of the other point are to be found in terms of A, B, C, which here are, if you look at it, you find that these coordinates are 1A, 1A means uh, I'm taking A to be in X direction, so that is why it is written as 1A, so this is in X direction. 0B means no movement, you are at the origin only in the Y direction and you are at the origin only in the C direction, in the Z direction. So the coordinates of this point here that you observe are 1 for X, 0 for Y and 0 for Z. And we then write this direction as 1, 0, 0 direction. We are just deriving it as 1, 0, 0 direction, but we then reduce it to the smallest integer and write it with square brackets without commas. So this is just to make you understand. But if you want to name the direction here using Miller indices, the indices are, the directional indices are put in square brackets with, let us say, 1, 0, 0 for this particular direction here. <coughs> Is it right? Yes, sir. Okay, let's move forward. 
uh, I go to one more example. So I have now named here this as the 100 zero zero direction. How we did that? We chose the origin on this direction. Then you find the coordinates of the other point on that direction here. You find that the coordinates were 1 in x, 0 in y and 0 in z. You took out the coordinates, made them to the nearest integers. In this case, they are already nearest integers, but in some case there can be fractions. We will see that. And then we write them as square brackets as 1, 0, 0 direction. Okay. <clears throat> what about this direction that you observe now? So it's, uh, it, it is also 1, 0, 0? Yes. See. Obviously, because if you take the upper one, oh, forget about this, this was not there. You said this is the direction I want to name using Miller indices. So you choose on the origin here, then I write it as 1, 0, 0. Similarly, this is also 1, 0, 0. Yes, sir. And this is also 1, 0, 0. Yes, sir. What is common in between them? Or what is not, what, 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 what we also want to know is that when you specify the Miller indices of a direction as 1, 0, 0, you are not giving its position here. The position is not given because this position also, this position also, here also, here also, you are having the same Miller indices, 1, 0, 0. But the commonality between these is that the directions which have the same Miller indices, they are parallel to each other. Can you see that? Yes, sir. So we say Miller indices of a direction represents only the orientation. It gives you only the orientation, <coughs> not its position and not its sense. <coughs> because if somebody says, I want to mark this direction, okay, this way, opposite, just opposite, here. Now I can say I will choose the origin here and then start moving it. So it may then give me what? If I say now the direction is this one, okay, this here, this one. So the origin may be chosen here, somebody may choose the origin here. Coordinates of the other point are minus one, zero, zero. zero, zero. Yes, so that's what I'm saying. The Miller indices of the direction do not convey us any position or sense. All the parallel directions have the same Miller indices. Whatever parallel directions are there, this is very important for us to understand. So whatever parallel directions are there, they all have the same Miller indices. So if it is 1, 0, 0 here, for all the parallel ones, they will have the same Miller indices as 1, 0, 0. Let's look at one more example here. This one. So now can you help me in this? Yes, sir. For x, y and z, I have marked the coordinate systems already. So the origin is located here. This is the origin. The coordinates of the other point here are required. So they are? So 0, a by 2 and sorry, b by 2 and c by 2. Okay, we are saying a, b, c is for x, y and z. So a is for x. B is for Y and C is for Z. Okay, so if I talk in terms of the coordinates of this point with this as the origin, because I have chosen this as the origin, the coordinates of this point at A are not zero. You said it wrong. How it is sir, zero? It is sir, half of A. So it's, it's in YZ plane. It is in YZ plane, but sir. I am taking the origin here. My origin is here. So this is your x direction. So you, this is the face point. This is the face center. This is the corner. So the origin is at the corner of the cube. This point is not at the corner of the cube. This is at the face of the center of the face of the cube. So if you take this way, I can say that this point is equivalent to that. So I can say I, I moved this, this point here. I moved this x, which is half of A, I moved this point in Y, this distance in Y, which is half of B, and I moved one lattice distance in Z direction, which is one C. Is it sir, right? Cursor, sir, cursor got late move over, so you confusion over. Cursor ko move hone do, koi baat nahi. Wo to aise hi chalega, ab usko to main help nahi kar sakta. 
बट आई एम ओनली टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस पॉइंट द वन विच यू से एज ए ए तो दिख रहा है आपको हां यस सर so the coordinates of the point a in reference to the to the origin here are that to reach a you have to move half lattice distance in x direction so it is half of a you have to move half lattice distance in <coughs> y direction it is half of b and you have to move one lattice distance or one lattice parameter in z direction it is 1 c so the coordinates of point a the other point are half half and 1 the coordinates are half half and 1 and now if you <coughs> convert them to nearest integers what i will get 1 1 2 1 obviously you will get this half of 1 to reduce as a, it is it is the found as 1 1 2 so the miller indices of this direction oa which you wrote there is nothing but 1 1 it okay yes sir okay let us see if it moves forward <coughs> what about the green one the green one is now visible to you Yes. Sir. So where is the origin now? Where do we have to change to take the origin? I will take the origin here at this point. B If I write point. this point at B point, B point will be the origin. Then to reach at this C, <coughs> what will be the coordinates of C? How much I have to move? I have to move this. Yes. So this sir. is your origin here. Keep it in mind the sign convention. This is positive y. This is negative y. This is positive x. This is negative x. This is positive z. This is negative z. So how much I have to move for going to C? The coordinates of point C are. So z. Me to zero and. How is it zero? So z axis there. a c point but originally thing do i no anyone else can help me out here so minus 1 minus 1 1 that that is what that is how it has to be read how it it is not at zero the origin is here <coughs> origin mm. is here at point b so for moving to c you have to if you look at this in x direction you have to move backwards means backwards means minus x so i say minus 1 in y direction you have to move minus 1 that is minus 1 here because it is in negative direction here this is also in negative direction in z i have to move positive 1 so i have 1 here so the coordinates of the point c are minus 1 1 1 and then we will write the miller indices of this direction shown with this green arrow as Bar one, bar one, one with square brackets. So minus one is normally written and Miller indices as bar one. So it will be written as bar one, bar one, one with square brackets. So whenever you use the term square brackets, we say we are using the Miller indices for directions. <coughs> When you go to Miller indices for planes, we will use the round brackets. Is it clear to you now? How do you give directions the indices? Sir, why we are choosing different origin? Why you are choosing different origin is just to give you a method to. It is a method which we are explaining to provide the naming convention or Miller indices to the directions here. The basic definition of the direction happens to be that this directional vector, the Miller indices are nothing but the components of the direction vector on the x, y, and z axes. that is the basic definition of the direction here that is how you specify that but to give it a mathematical way or to a way to solve it this is one way to solve it there are many other books which will give you some other the different ways of solving the problem but this is the simplest one which i find here that you take the origin on the direction 
and then coordinate uh, find the coordinates of the other point when you go to point when you go to miller analysis of planes we will not use this we will go to some other method of drawing it we will then say the origin must not be on the plane where we are saying here we are saying that the origin must be on the direction vector <coughs> when you go to planes we will say the plane the origin must not be located on the plane so these are the ways in which the methods are this is a method by which you can actually find out and describe the direction uh, the miller indices of the direction and as i said this is one way of doing it there are many other ways available in different books of doing that same exercise and you will get the same result this is one way of doing that okay so uh, i think there is there's a lot of problem with this platform which i see on the very first day <clears throat> so i have a cubic system and now i define a term called as family of directions i think now the it is it is complete on your still one is missing it's now it is complete can you see now a cubical unit cell is in a cubical system and i have marked the directions here the first one happens to be here the 0 1 0 direction and then i have 0 bar 1 0 similarly i have 1 0 0 direction here and then i have bar 1 0 0 direction here. then i have the 0 0 1 direction here and then 0 0 bar 1 direction here any confusion how we have arrived at these indices based upon our previous two slides rupinder ji singh yes sir based upon our previous two slides i hope you can understand that how we have named these directions because all of these are passing through the same origin so i am taking this for this as the origin and based upon this as the origin we have marked this as 0 1 0 direction up to here yes sir <coughs> and then we have said that this is 0 1 1 bar 0 this is 0 0 1 this is <coughs> 1 bar 0 0 and this is 1 0 0 is that right yes sir yes sir we are trying to call them as family of directions the question is why we are calling them as family of directions i will answer it later but a family of directions is given by this symbol we say this is now 0 1 0 yeah. and we say this is 0 1 0 family of directions whether it is 0 1 0 or 0 bar 1 0 or 0 0 1 or other other one so there are six directions which i say belong to the same family in a cubic system why we sorry, sorry why we say that so yes so they are interrelated to each other they are crystallographically equivalent that is what yes. you mean because yes, if sir. you take this as a simple cubic let us say in cubic system i say this is a simple cubic or cubic cubic p system so this direction is also having an atom here and an atom here the interatomic spacing is whatever it is it is available here similarly this direction also has the atom available here similarly here also here also here also and here also so these directions are crystallographically equivalent and if you recall yes, we said that the properties of the material in these crystallographic directions will also be same because the interatomic spacing is same or i can say that i find the next lattice point at the same distance here whether i move in this direction or the other direction or the next direction or the next direction or the next direction so that is yes, why yes. they are known as family of directions we say 0 1 0 happens to be a family of directions which has these six directions in it they are all crystallographically equivalent 
Why we say that? Because they, we, what we mean to say here is that they will have the same properties. The crystal will have the same properties in this direction. They'll be, I should, they may be having the same properties here. That's what is the meaning of that. Or in terms of lattice points, we are saying that you get at the same distance, you get an atom. The same thing is not valid if you move from this point in this direction. The distance is different. Here it is not A. Here it is everywhere. It is A, A, A. Where when you move along the diagonal, it is not A. It is root 2A. If you move yes. along the body diagonal, it is root 3A. Root 3A. So we say that these are crystallographically equivalent directions, and that is why they are referred to as a family of directions. So I, I will end it here. It will, I think it will be better that uh, I keep on posting videos here so that the lag is not disturbing our understanding. Otherwise, <coughs> this, uh, this, is, this is difficult to control this lag here and then continue with discussions. You have to stop many times. Anyway, uh, mm, thank you very much for joining and we'll see you in the next class. Okay.